welcome back to the ZukoCast episode 5. Today we are joined with Arizona, a longtime member of the Discord server in Zuko's world and also uh, in the surrounding communities. I thank you very much. Welcome to the server, Arizona. It's been a while since you've been here, I must say. A lot has changed. Yes, quite a bit. I mean, just, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> You are currently residing in the uh, on God Island in the underground section. We are in the podcast room, um, and uh, this is this is just uh, where we've where we've gone. After I became a god, I decided I was going to chill it out a little bit. Though the world is kind of in the in the midst of a of a drowning right now of a purging. I am currently drowning the world because someone stole the heart of Atlantis, which kept the monsters from the sea. There's There's been a lot of lore. There's been a lot of lore. I also have masks if you want one. Oh. Oh, yeah, there is. Ooh, that... Do... I'm, I mean, I've got the Thanos gauntlet. I'm going to have to go with Notch Thanos. There it is. Yeah, Notch Thanos is my personal favorite, actually. <laughs> I've even got, you can see it right here, I got a little notch plushie sitting here. <laughs> which which is uh, has been a topic of discussion with a lot of people because he's been very controversial. Very controversial. Um, I don't know how much you know about him, but he's been called a, a transphobe, a, uh, oh, he's been called a racist. And we're talking about the creator of Minecraft. He didn't get invited to Minecon because of it. My God. Yeah, I mean, I've seen his Twitter, and he, I mean, I suppose Twitter is the sort of platform where you're allowed to be open with your opinions, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's something that, and I mean, you, you would think, I should say, you would think, and uh, for saying some things that were, were, I would say, questionable, things that I would say were were a little, a little edgy, maybe, but, but I don't think, I don't think racist or homophobic or transphobic um, and I mean, this dude got canceled so quick, but we're talking about a billionaire. I think he'll be all right. I think he'll be fine. Yeah, I think he'll pull, pull through. Yeah. So what have you been up to, my friend? How's uh, how's life been treating you out in the out in the wild in the the pre boogaloo? Yeah. Well, I mean, since um, well, coronavirus hit, I've been mainly working on my college projects for home because uh, I'm currently studying studying games development. Ooh. Do you, have um, a, do you have a favorite type of game that you would want to develop? Well, I mean, funnily enough, I'm actually working on my final year one project right now. I'm developing <laughs> a 2D um, multiplayer shooter called Quonk Tournament. Ooh, it's going to... Okay, okay. What's, uh, yeah. What elements would you say it draws from? What, uh, what inspirations? Oh, um, I, it mainly draws from my personal love of 2D games, mainly due to the fact that I can't aim. In a 3D <laughs> it makes it a, it definitely makes it a lot easier doesn't it yeah <laughs> um but it mainly draws inspiration from the late and great arena shooters from the 90s so unreal tournament and quake tournament which if you put two and two together you get the name of the game ah yes i see that's pretty smart so it's 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 like combining your some of your favorite games in the past and and putting a new spin on them of course you're you're still very new so we can't I mean, I'm expecting a, a triple A title, but uh, you know, most people I'm sure are are okay with anything. Yeah. So yeah, I'm come. I'm in the beginning stages. Like, I set myself out a plan. I've completely just ignored that, and I've begun working on the soundtrack, which was supposed to be week eight instead. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to keep track, even even when you plan stuff out. Like, uh, like you get a whole list of things you got to do, set in order, and all of a sudden you're somewhere else. What do you, uh, what have you been making the music in? Um, I've been using FL Studio because that's what um, I'm most familiar in, and I actually caught one of your streams once, which taught me how to use the uh, piano roll. Because before that, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. <laughs> Glad I could help. I'm, I'm trying to start streaming just music and just. And when I'm playing Minecraft, I want to stream me actually creating the uh, the project I'm working on, which is an MMORPG. I can't say I'm making a, a game like you are, like coding. I actually was messing around a little bit in Java coding, but I couldn't be bothered. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah, I'm not too partial to Java myself. 
is uh yeah it's it seems like it's i mean I, I don't know how i guess how similar is is java to other languages what would you say separates it if you know well i mean programming itself like it kind of works on the uh concept of once you've kind of got one language in there you can kind of, it gets easier to understand the others like real languages so, like, as well yeah because mm. you because like for example sure. um i started uh year eight i think which was when i was around 12 13 with python and then i did that until year 11 when i was 16 Okay. And then now I'm working on C Sharp, um, which is, you know, what it's kind of up there with like AAA gaming. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the norm right there. You combine that with some, some 3D rendering programs. If you're doing 2D, all you got to do is make the sprites and the, and the backgrounds, that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> even a 2D game, though, I mean, the, the, you can't downplay it. Even, even a 2D game is, is a tremendous amount of work um any any kind of game creation any any coding unless you're just making like a like a like a bank uh like a financing application it's it's pretty tough yes certainly because i mean if you don't really have an idea of what you're doing in the first place it's going to be a million times harder oh 100 percent. would you do you have a recommendation for a first language do you think python was the best choice Definitely. Python has a bunch of support everywhere. Like, you can find countless online guides for it, like, a bunch of YouTube tutorials. And once you kind of, like, you don't have to understand it inside out. Like, as long as you can kind of get um, get on with it, maybe, I don't know, code yourself a little calculator or something, you should be pretty much good to go, in my opinion, for any other language. Noted, noted. Because Java does seem to be a, a, a bitch. I don't, I don't know enough about programming to say that it's e it's harder than anything else but uh it didn't seem easy that's for sure uh um, i mean you got youtube tutorials just <laughs> learn java in 11 minutes i'm like okay let's do this and uh 20 minutes later i still have not learned java <laughs> yeah I, I was never too fond of java myself we tried it out once in computer science and i never really got the hang of it <laughs> the best s programming language that i know uh, funny enough is is scratch because uh, because that's scratch. what i learned in it's it's so fun but it's it's and it, it does uh it does translate to other languages i feel like it has a um it's it gives you the bare bones like the the essentials what you need to know about what programming is and puts it in like a like a kid-friendly like learning development form and that's mm. that's pretty much how i got all my my knowledge on just the fundamentals of programming to the point that I feel comfortable, like, if I needed to fix a certain line of code or was working with Java plugins, which is something I'm actually getting into, uh, I could look up a tutorial and figure it out. YouTube is, is the savior as long as you know the fundamentals. True that. Same with video editing. Same with music making. It's mm, Just learn the fundamentals, and then you're good to go. You just <laughs> say, I want to do this. Google it, and there you go. You, you figured out how to do it. Yeah, definitely. Dude. Mm. Hmm? Programming. That shit is hard. It's it's really hard. I tried to do it with I tried to I tried to do Java programming as I said. Um like Java Minecraft plugins. I tried to just get right into the Minecraft plugins and I was like, I don't know about Java to be able to do this. Like I started reading a tutorial I started watching a tutorial and they just started speaking in a foreign language to me. But uh, yeah. that's something I would really love to get into, or just meet someone who who does Java programming because it's that's a that's a fun one. That's a fun one. Yeah, unfortunately, programming is one of the things where you got to um, learn to walk before you run, rather than the other way around. Yeah, yeah, you can't just hop into anything. I I learned that lesson for sure. My years of Scratch have failed me. Well, I mean, I'd consider Scratch as if you were to consider like your first actual programming language a school you could consider scratch kind of like preschool or kindergarten it really is it really is it's not uh it's not going to get you into programming and i know i actually have a lot of long term friends from that website cuz i was very prominent on it um that have moved on to things like animation and music um outside of programming just because it's it's not for everybody it's definitely not for everybody it's very ten it's strenuous and if you're not uh 
if you don't have the mindset for it to just go through these projects, just writing out lines of code and learning the shortcuts, even with shortcuts, it's it's a lot. Mm. But yeah, but yeah, man, hmm? I am tired. <laughs> it's been it's been a stressful last couple of weeks for a lot of people. How's uh are you you're in the UK, right? Or yep. I, yeah, yeah. How is how are the tides out in the UK right now? How are how are the uh, vibes out there? They're sort of mixed, I'm gonna be honest. Like uh we've started to open everything up again, even though as it stands it's really not a good idea because we're gonna get a second wave at this rate, but all across the board, everybody's saying that. And then on uh, the upside, hmm. I got to see my mates. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get to, uh, I, I'm not really going to be doing anything different. I don't plan on uh, going to clubs or anything like that. I'm definitely worried that even if I, even if I get it, I might be just, just fine, but I'm not trying to be responsible for someone else's uh, infection and possibly even death. Like the, Ugh, the idea of yeah. that is just, nope, nope, I'm good. Uh, but regardless, people are protesting. People are, some people are wearing masks. Some people just are just saying, fuck it, no masks. Um, and it's a uh, it's a scary time. I will I will say uh, it's interesting to see that it's more than just the United States. Um, it's and it's deeper than just specific um, protests as well. It's it's not just a specific movement. It seems very across the board. It seems people are just fed up in general. Yeah, I mean this whole thing that's been happening in the U.S. It's spread to even my little town. Like we've got a we had I think it was. Last Saturday, we um there was a march for for the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and we're talking like like small towns, suburban areas. It's it's everywhere from from the from the rural areas to the cities. It's somebody's getting up and holding a sign. Uh, something that stuck with me that one of my buddies told me was was he he asked somebody what the like they were holding a sign. He was he was near a protest and he asked them what the sign meant because it was some kind of metaphor or something and and the dude said i don't know i have no clue what this sign means he's like well did you make the sign nope somebody gave it to me and so to think about that it's it's like it's this dude does not know what he's protesting perhaps like he doesn't really even know what he's out here doing but he knows he's doing something mm. and uh, i think that's that's a lot of people i think there's not a it's it's not organized it's just kind of like controlled chaos um, and groups like Black Lives Matter, um, as big as they are, I worry that they could be um, corrupted themselves. I worry that they could be compromised. Um, I've I've actually heard a, a few different. I've heard some rumors here and there. I've heard about like who uh, runs uh, BLM, who funds them. I mean, think about here. Here's some food for thought. What is the goal of Black Lives Matter? What is their plan? I mean, I suppose, wouldn't it be, you know, that, I mean, it's a bit stupid that's not happened already, but the treating of um, those with um, with darker skin, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, I'm shit with stuff like this. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, it's basically treating um, other people like you would, like anyone else would treat each other. Like you would, ex fact... yeah, to, to treat people with, with respect, with dignity, with, uh, with just like how you would treat your... your your family i guess is is a good way to is a good way to put it um the friendliness of it for sure that being said that being said it's it's uh it's something that isn't very clearly laid out it's something that seems just a little too broad and and the reason that it it worries me um is because they're sending so much money to these guys um the question then becomes, what is the money going towards? Um, and I mean, we could very well see some some news in the future, and and I could just be not well versed. I may not know my facts, um, and they they have a plan and all that. But um, that is something, and I've talked with a few people. I've talked with a few black people about this too. That that are that think the same thing. That think that it's like this this movement, uh, like. <laughs> There, I think there might be more white people than black people in Black Lives Matter. Let that sink in. That's that's a possibility. 
Mm. Now, I, all right, I'm not going to stay on this topic too long. It is a little controversial. Uh, I don't want to, if you don't know too much about it, we'll, we'll leave it for another day. But it's just some food for thought, just some food for thought. Definitely. Uh, oh, here's an idea. Um, did you catch the S&P Live reunion? I did not. How did that go? I've been a little out of the loop. I saw there All was right. one that there was like Michael McChill did something and a few others. Yeah, it was for raising the bar, I'm pretty sure. I ended up watching all 12 hours, funnily enough. <laughs> oh, wow. Was it, wasn't it? Was it on a different server? Uh, Yeah, they did it on a different server. Like, uh, funnily enough, um, Lunch Club was pretty absent from it. Yeah, I, I, from what I heard, it, it, like, I didn't see them streaming. I did see McChill. I actually followed a, I did see the, the final end of, like, I saw, like, the last hour or so of that. Um, and I, I actually, like, followed a few new people from SMP Live that I didn't know were in it. Um, but it, it did seem kind of, like, half hearted. It didn't look like it was, it was everybody was there. Look kind of last minute. And Lunch Club is, has seemed to have, uh, disappeared. They're just all chilling. I feel like they're all just kind of partying, doing their thing, hanging out. I mean, Who that's knows? fair enough. Because I mean, as as great as Lunch Club is, and they have, and their roots are utterly cemented in SMP Live. I, I if I were them, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't want to be the SMP Live guys. You know, I wanted. I'd want to be Lunch Club. A hundred Wouldn't want to be known just for SMP Live. A hundred percent. Did they show up at all? Did anyone from Lunch Club um, go to the to the event? Uh yeah, um Carson Schlatt, I think Ted popped up at some point. Okay. I don't So they were Don't there. remember. Yeah, I, um, a few of the front runners were there definitely. Okay. But they were more they kind of more popped in for a little bit and then went off I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Carson's streams have been he he can literally just ha he can start a stream up and immediately make bank. I look yeah, forward great. to what he's doing in the future cuz he can do a lot at this point. And the whole, the entirety of Lunch Club at this point, they they're a powerhouse in the YouTube community now, and they're just they're just beginning. They're just beginning. They haven't hit their their channels. What like a hundred, two hundred k, um, maybe a little bit more at this point. I might be behind. I can Google that actually? Lunch Club. So, oh, they're almost to a million. They're at 700k. Yeah. Ooh. Powerhouse. Absolute powerhouse. And, uh, I yeah, yeah. What was that? Uh, sorry. Um, I, I reckon if they were to upload more regularly, they could easily cement themselves even p p potentially up there with, you know, some of the big, big names. Like, what was that one thing? Like, for example, to the scale of Jake Paul's group. Yeah, Team 10. You got, like, That's Smash. It. Um, I think Rocket Jump is has got their own like group, but I mean we're talking like, like uh, groups of YouTubers. There's there's a lot. Um, but yeah, no team ten team ten level, but less scummy. Like <laughs> definitely. I love their I love their their uh, their their humor is is dry, but like very satisfying. Like the 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 video they made that's just them stealing from other YouTubers, that kind of cemented like their position. First of all, like they could just kind of go to these people's houses and be like, "We're gonna steal stuff from you." And I thought that was yeah, a, a hilarious. It, it's I, I'd say it's their brand of humor. It's just sort of blunt, but it's so blunt it's funny, you know. Like yeah, when they yeah. turned up to Captain Sparkle's house, just like, "Hi, we're gonna be robbing you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was cracking up with all that. It's it really feels like like the the high school lunch table like that one high school lunch table just decided to make a youtube channel like i feel like that's i i don't know if that's what their what their name inspiration was but like it feels like that it feels like a, a bunch of a bunch of dudes that were sitting together at a lunch table were like let's let's pull a camera out let's do some stuff and there bunch they are or how is the how is the uh, the fame been, my friend? How is how is your cult been? Have they been uh, have they been uh, has it been overwhelming at all? Uh, well, I mean, I'd like to say that I've taken to it pretty well. I mean, I've gotten to the point where my Instagram bio is now cult figurehead. Cult figurehead. 
Like, I mean, my cult's doing great, though. Like, you know, I love all the people in there to death. They all mean so much to me. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. And, I mean, it's who, how many people out there can say they have their own cult? It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very small number. There's actually a, a real-life cult. Not a, not a digital cult, a real life cult, like right near me, that uh, that has been around since I was a little kid. Me and my buddies were thinking about uh, filming there, maybe maybe getting the inside scoop for a for a bit, but we have to we we first have to do our our research. We have to get a team on the ground. We have to get those spy binoculars. <laughs> Definitely. Ah, oh, but my friend. I mean, yes. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, you're good. You're good. I am. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I feel like a cult investigation by you would be really interesting because you be you bring kind of a brand of personality to it that I don't think's been explored before. Well, we've already been we've done one episode recorded that we have to edit. Uh, me and a couple of my friends have have been starting up a channel called The Boys Investigations. And it's basically uh, us playing these characters. One of us is uh, uh, one. One of the characters is the famous musician Joshua Giannono, who is a just complete government conspiracy theorist. Uh, I'm the I'm the philosopher, and then we have our 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 videographer, the director of it all. And it's just it's just stupid stupid stuff. We. <laughs> But we're trying to all tie it all into like conspiracies. In every episode, we want to find some kind of new avenue to uh, to investigate. Um, and yeah, I think I think it could go pretty well. Yeah, but, no, that uh, sounds really interesting, actually. Yeah, I look yeah. forward to to editing the. It's it's a lot of editing. That's the only thing. It's as being a being a content creator is is not easy, and also leading a, a regular life, making sure you got bills paid. Mm. but uh no it's 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 a, it's very fun at the same time very rewarding uh nothing else i'd rather be doing myself it's great to hear the one thing you want to be able to do is do what you love i suppose in it yes sir yes sir have you quit the vape my friend you say that just as i take a hit <laughs> that's funny i i I was uh, I was off for a little while and then uh one one trip was all it took. And I was like, "And I'm back. One trip to the Wawa." Wawa Wawa Wawa. Wawa. You guys don't have Wawas. Do you know what Wawa I don't know. is? I'm going to be honest, no. I just thought it sounded funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's a it's a gas station like convenience store. They and they're based off like their their logo is a duck. Wow 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 wow. Yeah, I always I would always call it wah wah, wah wah, wah wah. Ah. But it's wah wah. Oh my goodness! I think I think uh, I think I am out of things to talk about at this point. Is there any is there anything you want to promote? Any uh, any topics that you had on your mind? Because we can go however long, but uh, the dry air don't want that. Don't want that. Our viewers, the poor mm. viewers. These poor guys, stuck in this camera. They can't. They can't even move. By the God, way, oh, I didn't tell you how I how I do this. I I record on my uh, on OBS. I record the audio, and then I also record in game. And I slap a camera right here on the top, and I just have it record the entire thing. At some point, I will actually get cameras that pan between people. So like when you're talking, it cuts to you. When I'm talking, it cuts to me. But that's uh, it's not in the budget right now, unfortunately. Yeah, um, I, I I'd actually like to talk about something a little close to my heart. Um, Absolutely. Have you heard of AOL? AOL. I am quite familiar with AOL. Well, I mean, it shut down officially. What was it? December twenty seventeen, I believe. But there's been a revival project working on it. Yes, yes. I was actually invited to this, but I never downloaded the, the uh, the app. I heard that you guys have a a group chat, in AOL. Is it AIM or is it AOL? Uh, well, AOL's like the general term, but 
Um, we're on a IAM, which is AOL Instant Messenger. So it's the term's really interchangeable. But yeah, like I was like, I'll t tell you how it started. I was um, just because like, I mean, I love like web, like internet and stuff from the 90s because that was yeah. Nostalgia. And personally, in, at my um, in my opinion, that was when it it was at its peak because you know it's just the untethered creativity expressed through these sites provided just a window to the simpler times. Oh, you know, when through like like forum posts, like oh my god, it was it was great. Yeah, nothing like we have today. Yeah, and I mean like so I w so I decided to go on Wikipedia to read a bit more about it, and I noticed a link to the revival project. So I decided, fuck it, why not? Let's download it. And I set my status after I got it all set up as add me on AIM. And so I believe it was Blake who first asked what's AIM. Because he, he tried was. to send me an email or something. So I introduced him to it. And then I believe Hayden got on board and it just kind of spread from there. Has it still been growing? You guys been getting new members? Uh, Yeah, let me get up the Discord and I'll tell you how many members we've got in here at the moment. The AIM revolution. Uh, we have old... let's see, four, two, six. We have twelve people at the moment. It's a pretty solid group. That's the, that's the group chat right there, the AIM group chat. I love yeah, that. I mean, it's just fun, really, because you can just hop on and annoy your mates because it has still has all the classic sounds. And I managed to oh, yes. came to a realization when somebody like logs out, it has a door closing sound, oh, and I'm God. pretty sure that's the same. A uh, door close sound that's used in Schlatt's stream highlights. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That like yeah, the well, the ending, yeah, like right 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 at the beginning when it does that door sound, like what's popping. I know yeah. what you mean. That's a cool sounding door sound. Yeah. So and because um, probably what I think is one of the driving forces behind it as well is because the revival project is really small. So literally, loads of usernames are open. For example, I got the username Aura. Nothing more, nothing less, just Ooh. Aura. Wonder if Zuko still exists. Probably not. Maybe, maybe. Well, I think if you guys want to join Aura's AOL server, make sure to hit him up. Make sure to hit him up. Got a yeah, we, we'd always have new members. Yeah, uh, let's see. I think I've got a couple more topics, if that's cool with you. Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I in my um, spare time, I enjoy working back to development a bit. I enjoy working on Discord bots. Oh, that's really cool. I did not yeah, know you did that. Have you done any um, uh, bots for, like, any of the servers that uh, that we, that we're we in, like uh, like Daily Schlattwalking? Well, I'm, I'm on and off. I've been working on a bot for the Daily Schlattwalking server. I, I'd, I'd say that I've been working on it consistently, but that's a lie. <laughs> Yeah, I'm planning to do just a few basic things. So like, you know, a general help command, maybe a, a random video picker. So like, oh, you should watch that walk number, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, okay. um, that's pretty as far cool. as bot, bot development goes, it's actually pretty open because as, as of course discord itself has gotten more popular so is the development aspect of it to the point where there's multiple different languages because it's not just java that you can do it because i'm doing it in c sharp for example i was just going to ask that actually that's really cool so you can you can kind of use your your favorite language to program discord bots that's what that's what's kind of sucks about uh minecraft coding is it's all java you have to use java you're forced to use java which is yeah, understandable exactly understandable but discord bots that's really it's good to know once you get uh when you get your skills up have to uh have to dm me have to show me what you got talk to amelia too they're they're very into the the discord bots they've they're made they're working on schlap schlapman bot um oh. perhaps you could uh, learn a thing or two from them oh yeah i'd love to learn definitely like at the moment probably the main one that i've got live is a stupid little one called tilde bot and all it does is it takes your message and puts the tilde at the end of it <laughs> that's it that's that that's that early level stuff like the hello world like uh, mm. pick a random number i love i love the the bots that turn your server into like an rpg 
I mean, I've always been an RPG fan myself. Like, I, I very much enjoy just the role play aspect of games. Like, like even in Minecraft, that's what I'm actually trying to work on. But they do that. They there's some really interesting Discord bots. Like, uh, like I mean, an economy bot. You make an economy bot, you're set. You're you're set for life. You get that money. It might be Discord money, but you still get that money. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, stuff like that, you've got to be able to actually know what you're doing unlike someone oh, yeah. like me oh yeah it takes it takes a lot of time it takes years uh even people that are that are seasoned have to take some time to learn discord bots but you've got the you've got the that foundation so mm. i'm sure it's just a matter of googling a bunch of things until you've got a, a decent knowledge i mean when when it, when you break it down once you kind of know what to do for programming half of your time will be split towards how do i do this google help me please i'm suffering <laughs> yeah <laughs> true all right i got a topic i got a topic that topic Ooh. is music music my friend what how has the music what have you been listening to in the music industry besides prinzuko of course besides <laughs> Obviously. Um, well, I mean, let me get my Spotify up right here. Oh, uh, get mine too. Recently, um, I, I mean, I nowadays I mainly find my music, like new music, through either YouTube Autoplay because I've left it on by mistake, <laughs> or Spotify's um, Weekly Discover, which is actually how I found you. The Weekly Discover? Wow. Yeah, because uh, I believe it was Ivy Starlin that Weekly Discover picked up, and I decided... Hey, this looks interesting. And then I saw you streaming, so I hopped in. And actually, I can see the analytics. I'm that's that's really cool cuz I just recently started getting, well not super recently, but yeah, Discover Weekly has has done a number for me. That is dope. Yeah, I so recently. Listen to, well, I started listening to the Daily Mix, um, which is just they pick your favorite songs but discover weekly i i used to listen to that a lot you can find some really interesting music yeah definitely i feel like you you, yep. you dig through a lot of shit though there is sometimes you're just like ah i don't think definitely I did strike the other day though and i ended up with like seven odd new songs in my like songs playlist nice I, there's there's a there's a very big surge in the creative field right now especially in the digital creative field uh, I've just seen my numbers just naturally rising, and I th I think I can say that's that's kind of happening with everybody. Oh, but oh, d Oliver, do you know Oliver Tree? Um, I I think I've seen ads for his stuff, and I think Spotify's deered me into his stuff now and again. He's the guy He's who made Alien to... Boy. I fell down to earth. From a hundred <laughs> miles away, and somehow I still make it work. But it's overrated and somehow played out. That song, that one's really good. I went to a concert from him and he was in a wheelchair. That's uh, that's that's about all I got on that one. Dude's an actual stuntman outside of his music. Oh, cry. So that dude is is legendary. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, it takes some balls to rock up to your concert in a wheelchair. That's how you know you're dedicated. His foot was broken. His foot was broken, and he still showed up. <laughs> he made a show out of it. He actually had, like, like people in medical... I made me wonder if it's real or not, because he had people coming on in, like, uh, in, like, surgeon outfits and stuff. I was like, is this dude, is this dude tripping, or did he just want to... Did he just want to go... He just wanted to be on a wheelchair for a show. Like, he just wanted to be able to say that. Like, I performed to a concert i performed to a, a huge at uh venue in, you know in a wheelchair that's that's legendary right there that is a flex that's it's, it's <laughs> that's a flex and a half <laughs> oh i've i've found a i've found there's there's a lot of artists that have been in my rotation lately but um the vibe lately has definitely been uh just just low-key bops like that that lo-fi people have been mixing lo-fi and hip-hop and and like it's becoming the new the new big thing uh you got people like uh oh who who is there there's gus dapperton there's rex orange county um a lot of people a lot of people would you have a do you have a genre that you that you flow towards uh i i mainly flow towards 
hip hop, like kind of rap and that stuff. Okay, okay. Hip hop is a is a very large genre. I mean, you've got the you've got the classic hip hop. You've got your, uh, I mean, <laughs> there's there's the as I was talking about the new the the lo fi age of hip hop where people are just kind of rapping over the the uh, beats to study to. Um, mm. There's there's the the individualists. There's people who are making it like it's not even hip hop anymore, but they're rapping still. Um, Genres are kind of melting, I feel like. And I think that's for the best, personally, because, I mean, but, you know, sometimes you get some people who only limit themselves to certain genres, but if we were to take all these things and smash them together, you could get to the point where people are exploring something that they wouldn't before and they like it. Yeah, cause it, all because it's, uh, it's, it's mixing, like, half of the song is, is, there, is that genre that they like. It's mixing their genre with something else that gives them a chance to branch off into a new... A new genre entirely. Um, it's ah, oh, damn! I lost my train of thought. Yeah, yeah. Music though, music is is a lifestyle. Music is is bringing a lot of people forward in today's climate. Definitely, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say I grew up with music. Because ever since I got that iPod Touch back in, Ooh. must have been what two thousand seven. Like the chances are if i'm outside i've got headphones on or earphones in or something i'm constantly listening to music yeah yeah that's that's me too every time i'm going on a walk headphones in i ain't listening to nobody around me though sometimes every once in a while it is nice to listen to the birds listen to the the ambience and well now they got music that does that for you they just throw the birds in the track it's like it's like you know c418 uh, that's that's somebody who, if you haven't given a listen, by the way, outside of his Minecraft music, amazing stuff. Very chill. I'll check him out, definitely. I mean, we're talking about the guy who made the Minecraft music. So overlooked, so overlooked. He he mm-hmm. really, he has like four or five albums outside of it. But that's my spiel on music. That's what I've got so far. That's, I mean, my life has been music and Minecraft. Those are those are pretty much the the topics that I know about. This podcast, I've been trying to uh, to branch out a little bit, see if I can see if I can uh, expand my horizons a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely, it's always good to branch out, but you shouldn't forget, in my opinion, what you've come from. You know, like music and Minecraft. In my opinion, that's a great place to start because Minecraft. You know, the creativity of that combined with the creativity required for music, that can make people, man. It's a power, you know? it's a, it's a power combination right there. It's like, if you had to get rid of, like, Minecraft or music, if you had to pick between one, that that right there, some a few people, a few people said, like, I, I put a poll up for that, actually, and pretty much everybody was like, music, hands down, Minecraft is just a creation. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that would, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I reckon myself, I'd actually go for Minecraft, if anything, because, don't get me wrong, Minecraft itself, it's legendary at this point, but music, man, like... Music is is ancient. It's timeless. It's existed pretty much as long as humans have. It's existed as long as, uh, as, as uh, sentience has existed. Since since somebody figured out how to pick up a stick and and tap it to the beat, just oh music, <laughs> monkey make music. Yeah, I mean it's just like it's amazing how prevalent music is though because you know like consider it's it's a bit like sometimes I think about languages you know like all all over the world like you know separated communities all came up with like the same medium to communicate with each other yeah yeah uh that that i mean that can be you can see how cultures in, intertwine with that kind of stuff and and i mean you see you see it come together in in very interesting ways um like international like music goes from i mean in, especially in today's age uh music goes from one part of the world to another just like that uh, whereas back in the day Music was separated by the culture. Music was was different based on where you lived, um, and it mm. still kind of is. It still kind of is, but now it's like you can hear something from anywhere in the world just playing on like a typical walk. 
find Definitely. that fascinating. I'm trying to yeah, get into just... different languages, learning Russian. I I want to be I want to make a a Russian English combination mix song. Oh, that would be sick. Cause music, it it's uh it it transcends language. It transcends just what what the lyrics have to say. Yeah, because sometimes you know, if you consider it, music could be a language in some cases. Because you can communicate yeah. feelings in music that you might not be able to with your voice. You know. You you really can. You can you can get a message across better with a song sometimes than with any words. And smoother, you can you can get a you can get a message across in a in a more uh, in a in just a overarching sense, just that 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 feeling, as you say, it's it creates your your relaying feelings. You're not relaying a specific string of words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'm dry at this point. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> That's all good, my friend. It's been great having you on the podcast. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Next time, if you want, by the way, Chalk, I actually asked Chalk if he wanted to come on as well, because three is a crowd. Three is, three is a crowd. Um, and I'm planning on having him, I think, in a... I mean, I, I asked him if he wanted to come on. He said yes, as long as I join his Fishing with the Boys podcast, so I will be on there. Have you been on the Fishing with the Boys podcast? I'm one of the three, mate. Oh, you're 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 the fishing with the boys podcast. Yeah, it's me, Chalk and Blake. Oh, that's amazing! I have to be on the fishing with the boys podcast, and I have to get the entire fishing with the boys co- podcast here. It's that's a great name. <laughs> I was so sad because I was like, I'm making the first podcast in Minecraft, and Chalk hit me up. He's like, No, you're not. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you that, mate. You guys beat me to it, but I can say it's the first in-game studio podcast in-game oh, podcast studio oh. yeah we'd love to have you on mate definitely we're we're i'm gonna be on i can't i i hope it's uh i hope it's soon i think i think uh i've already hit up i mean blake's been on here now you've been on here and chalk will be on here i'll have all three of you guys on my podcast so it's only fair that i join your guys podcast true that do you guys tell tell me a little bit about your podcast actually because I'm I as you can see I'm a I'm a new podcaster. I've what I've been doing is just coming in here with no plans whatsoever and just chatting it up and it, and it turns out pretty well for the most part. Um well, I'm not sitting here with notes though. Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest with kind of in the same boat cuz you know, we're new. We we started what 3 odd weeks ago, give or take. Like gotcha. we like our gimmick is that we go to and um, my go to places in Minecraft and we fish. Though for ex- for our second episode, we ended up. Terraria. Did you fish in Terraria yeah. at least? Uh, yeah, we fished for a bit and then duplication happened. It was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure to keep. I love the the idea of the fishing with the boys. You could do it in multiple games. I feel like you could like any game that has fishing. You could expand that as well, but but regardless, and then and then uh, the opus, the 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 crowning episode would be would be you guys all getting together and fishing, IRL. Oh, that would take a plane trip and a half, mate. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. <laughs> but uh, that's what that's what's great. You don't have to do that. Luckily, we can just hop in Minecraft and fish together. Minecraft yep. has brought so many people together minecraft is 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 a community more than so many other things i mean that's that's um, what this podcast is about is is you know a lot of people i'm bringing people that really don't have too much in common except minecraft when you have minecraft in common there's just that there's just that connection definitely i mean if it weren't for minecraft i doubt i'd be in this community at all exactly oh 100 percent, 100 percent. i would be doing different things with my life don't think i'd still be doing music honestly the fact that I was able to combine the two, and I mean, that's really what what kept me going. C four eighteen, my friend. But uh, yeah, it's been great having you on the podcast. Uh, I hope to be on yours. I hope to see your guys' podcast grow alongside mine, because uh, podcast is it's not an easy thing to do. I'm I was coming in here like I'm gonna do daily episodes. Now I'm like I'm a, I'm gonna post them every once in a while. <laughs> like yeah, but uh. But- yeah. Yeah, we'd love, to have you on. we'd love to have you on Fishing with the Boys. Thanks for having me. Of course. Arizona, 
it's been a pleasure. Uh, let's uh, let's get out of here. Say goodbye to the viewers. Viewers, have a have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye.